Another exciting episode of Salt Air. Now, it's been a long time since we've done one of these, but it's also been a long time since we've had a major release. Now, what I want to talk about today is the latest release, codenamed Hydrogen of 2014.1.0 of SaltStack. Now, this is the biggest release that we've done thus far, and it's got a new numbering scheme. So this is really important. We're switching all of our numbering over to be date-based. We think that this uh, much more closely relates to what's going on inside of SALT, as well as uh, making it very clear as to when certain things have been released. Also, the very nature of SALT it is that it is a very much so a rolling release piece of software. So, our old release numbering system was arbitrary numbers being increased, whereas now what we're looking at is the year of the release, the month where we branch the feature release, and then the bug fix version afterwards. So the next release that is a bug fix version of the 2014.1 will be 2014.1.1.1. All right. Now, there are many exciting things that have come in the 2014.1 release of SALT. Now, most notably, uh, we've merged the SALT Cloud project directly into SALT itself. Now, the benefits here are that um, we're no longer going to have discrepancies between versions, between Salt Cloud and Salt proper. Uh, also, it is noteworthy that it integrates many, many more controls and capabilities of Salt Cloud directly into Salt itself. And so the result there is that it's much easier to orchestrate things of a cloud nature from the core components of Salt. So Salt's API now has more direct access to Salt Cloud. Uh, Salt can be accessed, Salt Cloud can be more easily accessed via runners. Uh, Salt Cloud can also be controlled via ex execution modules and states. Another noteworthy thing is that we have many new, uh, new, new backends for Salt Cloud. So we have the new Google Compute Engine. We've been in cooperation with Google. They have helped us deliver something which is quite fantastic as far as the uh, total stability capability of the Google Compute Engine's uh, integration. Uh, we've added support for Microsoft Azure um, and SoftLayer. We have been actively engaged with partnerships and communication with uh, IBM for SoftLayer as well as Microsoft for Azure. So it's been a really good uh, four or five months of development with respect to these new Salt Cloud additions. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about briefly is the Salt Vert. We have seen a number of additions and um, extended capabilities with respect to Salt Vert. Primarily, what we're looking at here with Salt Vert is the fact that it is now a little more robust. It's gone through a lot more testing. Salt Vert has been deployed with many, many more users in the wild, and we've been in cooperation with many of these deployments. Uh, to harden SaltVert, make it faster, make it easier to use, make it more scalable. Now, uh, the next thing that we've got is that I wanted to just cover a few more high-level additions to Salt. So, we've had extensive Docker support added. Now, this has been done in partnership uh, primarily with a group out in France. And the Docker execution module has very extensive controls over the management of Docker instances. Now, something related to the Docker management that I want to mention is that we've also added much more advanced LXC support. So we have Docker support, but we also have a number of controls inside of Salt that allow you to directly access the underlying uh, Linux containers. So once again, allowing you to have a very layered view of what's going on inside of your infrastructure. We've added support for PagerDuty um, in the form of a returner, so it's much easier to have Salt send alerts back to PagerDuty. Now, BSD package management has been updated. This has to do with the new FreeBSD package management systems inside of FreeBSD 10, as well as full addition of, uh, finally, <laughs> we have full support for BSD ports as well. And finally, uh, we've got uh, network management for Debian-based systems. A big thanks goes out uh, to quite a few members of the community, one of which uh, being Gareth Greenaway, who helped us put together the Debian 
uh, network stack management. Now this means that you can now control network devices using SALT on Red Hat based systems like Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, Fedora, CentOS, and Scientific Linux, uh, but also now any Debian based distribution we have full support for as well. So Debian proper and Ubuntu and the vast number of variants that go with that. Now, the biggest thing that we have been focused on in this release is stability. The majority of what our work has been focused on is the addition of substantially more tests and hammering out how our test system works. Now I've briefly talked about our Jenkins server in previous Saltair episodes, but it's been really exciting to see what we can do now with our Jenkins instance. Because now every pull request that comes in is being tested directly as it comes in. It's made it much easier for people to contribute code that isn't going to break things. As well as the fact that our test coverage has gone up substantially. Now the release notes in this slide say 300 new tests. We haven't, I don't think that we've counted them explicitly. I believe it's actually closer to 500. Our test coverage has increased by over 120%. Now, one of the major additions that we've got in 2014.1.0 is the new proxy minion system. So, one of the classic problems of infrastructure management is how do you manage things that aren't full servers? Do you go through the process of creating, uh, making your management daemon run on devices such as switches, but then there's always going to be devices that you won't be able to get your uh, management software to run directly on, or in our case, of course, the minion. And so what we've developed is a generic interface that allows us to communicate with virtually any device via SALT's existing mechanisms. And we call it the SALT proxy minion interface. Now the proxy minion system makes it possible now for us to control things like switches and have full control over what they're doing, but also do it through all of the same constructs. So we can now do remote execution on a switch, as well as full configuration management of said devices. Now, out of the box, the only interface that uh, works with this new system, or sorry, the only device type that works with this new system thus far, are Juniper devices. Again, a big thanks uh, goes out to our partners at Juniper who have helped us put these things together. Now we also have a simple REST based example proxy that makes it very easy to see fundamentally how they work so that it's easy for others to come in and help, uh, help contribute and build up the number of remote devices that we're connecting to. Also, since it isn't focused just around switch communication, but this interface is still completely generic by nature, it can communicate with virtually any dumb networked device. So everything from a sensor to an APC unit is now up for grabs as far as what we're capable of doing. Now, I want to mention a few other things that have been added into uh, 2014.1.0. Now, particularly, uh, we've got new IPv6 support for uh, IP tables. The IP tables modules have undergone many, many improvements, so they're much easier to use, much more stable. Now, all of the file server backends, now we, we highlight GitFS because GitFS is the one that gets the most attention. But GitFS has undergone many performance optimizations as well as building in support for different backend bindings. So we now support not only Git Python for the backend, but also Dolwich or uh, libgit2. Now those uh, other backends, libgit2 for instance, is substantially higher performance than Git Python, but it's still missing a few of the features of Git Python, which is why we haven't switched it over to be the new default. But Git Python is now substantially faster, and uh, many of the hiccups that we'd run into in the past have also been taken care of. Minion FS is something else that I'm pretty excited about. This is a file server backend that allows you to store SLS files on individual minions and then have those get cached on the master and redistributed out. So that it's easy to be able to say that you want to look up a file to be used on minion Y that's really just happens to be at minion Z 
and channel that file through Salt's infrastructure over to another server, allowing you to do cross-server configuration in a very dynamic way. Uh, next we've got grains, this grains caching concept. Now this means that every time you run salt call, you no longer have to generate all of your grains. This was the one thing that was causing a lot of speed and performance issues because every time you'd run salt call you'd have to generate all your grains so a salt call command could take a couple of seconds to run. Well now we maintain a grains cache in the cache dir so when you spin it, when you execute salt call, if the grains are more than by default five minutes old, then you'll regenerate that cache. But otherwise, it'll just read that grains cache in, which again substantially speeds up salt call. Now the other thing that it does is it substantially speeds up salt SSH. So every time salt SSH needed to call out to a remote system, it would have to generate those grains for every single remote execution but not anymore. And so the benefit, the exciting thing here is that we do expect a roughly four times performance increase for SALT SSH. It's also noteworthy while we're on that subject. SALT SSH has received many new feature enhancements as we have fixed many new bugs and we continue to march forward with making that a component of SALT which is much more viable, easy to use and makes sense uh, for people who would rather be using SALT over SSH. So the performance of it keeps getting better as well as the functionality. Now, the virtual terminal interface is something that is new and again something we're very excited about. One of the problems that we've run into inside of SALT is that we have to shell out on a regular basis to do complex things. Well, if you're shelling out to very complex routines, then there can be a lot of limitations with respect to buffering and communication with the underlying shell that you're interfacing with. And so the virtual terminal interface has been developed to alleviate these problems. So it is like subprocess in Python's library, but substantially more powerful, more flexible, and gives you many more options about how the information with respect to those commands is being managed. So again, we're really excited about Virtual Terminal. It has not been completely integrated into SALT yet. It is being released beta first, as we typically do with new features. Uh, but it will most likely be used as the backend control for um, all of SALT Cloud and many of our shell out routines. All right. Thank you for listening to another uh, episode of SALT Air. We're very excited about this release of SALT 2014.1. I should mention that we now run uh, code names for all of our releases because we don't know exactly when they're going to be cut. We don't cut releases on a schedule, we cut them when they're ready. And so the 2014.1.0 release was codenamed Hydrogen. The next feature release is codenamed Helium and it goes ahead and follows the periodic table on up, which should give us enough time uh, to come up with a new versioning scheme. Now. You can contact us, of course, via the normal methods. And so, until next time, adios.